Okay, so I'm headed to work. I got my truck ready and everything already in advance. So I just got to go get my uh, reefer cooling down and start heading towards the tiny city streets of downtown when I get there and go pick up a load. Okay, I just got to work. I'm here in the semi. Um, I have it all prepped already though. I got a good clean trailer and everything. My truck's ready to go. Just had a PM. Um, you can see a video. I did it myself. Um, so I'm just ready to go drive these little crappy downtown streets over here, get in this place and uh, pick up this load. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be fun. So I'm going to get on that. Alright, so I just got to the shipper here. Um, it's about a 15 mile drive in this little downtown area, so it took me naturally about an hour to get here. That's how it goes. I wish I had a dash cam. I could show you some of the crazy crap I have to drive through with this giant truck. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but, uh, let me see if I can do a camera swap. So, this is where I'm at. I'm ready to go. I gotta go check in so I can be on time. But, they're gonna, I'm gonna go get a door and everything and then, uh, hopefully get start getting loaded so I can get out of here. Some good news, they were ahead of schedule, so I got a door right away. That doesn't always happen. That hardly ever happens. Normally I have to wait an hour or two, but good luck for me today, so I'm going to go ahead and back into this door with this uh, behemoth here, and then hopefully I'll get out of here sometime soon. Just got the door here, uh, so I need to go chalk it and drop the trailer and all that. All that junk. So I'm gonna go do that and then um, show you how straight I got in here. Nice and straight. All unhooked. I got the red light. That means they're uh, starting to work on my truck. So hopefully I'll be out of here pretty quick and I can uh, head back to the yard. You know. Okay. So just out of curiosity, I'm trying to see if my headset will pick up my sound while I'm recording. Hello? 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 Let's check it out. Okay, so my headset apparently doesn't record dick doodly, but that's okay. Uh, my camera on my phone is awesome. But, uh... I just uh, shut down my truck, even though it's kind of warm. They just started loading me up, and uh, I don't know if anybody saw my other video where I fixed my air leaks in my truck, but it's still quiet. It's still quiet. It's nice. You have no idea. It's nice. It's little things, man. Well, this is what happens when you got nothing to do. You got your sleeper bunk get out of here so this is where I hang out and sleep hopefully get sleep it doesn't always happen that way Ugh. man uh, truck and business sucks it sucks it's like a trap I could get in. It takes a lot of work and effort to get here. You make good money, but not great money. And then you're just stuck. So, the best thing to do if you get in this is use it for what you need and try to find something better for yourself because the truck is going to kill you, man. It's going to wear you out. It's going to wear you out. You're going to get all old and toothless and fat and nasty. Um, that's what my truck did to me for a little bit. You just have to force yourself to diet and force yourself to work out even when you're mentally and physically exhausted and tired possibly on top of all that. So that's just some experience. How long have I been driving now? Let's see. Almost six years. Yep. So I started early. You know, I started when I was 20. And I got my own truck and everything. And luckily that worked out for me because um, 
I knew some people who worked at better companies were able to get me on and own trucks and was able to sell me this truck personally. And, you know, that's how I got my truck. I didn't go through a dealership. There's no way. I don't know if you looked up the price of a semi truck, but man, <laughs> like low end is like 45000 So, like, if you want brand new, you're talking 150000 That's crazy. That's a house. That's the whole reason I got into trucking, because I wanted a house. But, um, yeah, so now I got my house. I still got a mortgage payment, so I got to keep my job, obviously. But I got my goal, my biggest goal in life for me so far is to get a nice house in the neighborhood I grew up in and did that. Now I'm trying to just move on to bigger and better things, but I still got to use my truck and plan accordingly and be smart about it can't just dump everything you know so I got a whole list of um, things I want to accomplish before I quit driving I got a list of um, some credit cards that I want to pay off and little small things that I want to finish paying off before I would be comfortable leaving so I'm gonna do that but also Apparently this December, they're going to mandate the uh, e-log for real this time. They've been trying to push it through, but luckily the trucking companies have been able to fight it off with lawyers and money. But uh, I don't know how much longer they're, they're going to do that. Apparently this coming December is going to be the legit time. There's no more pushing it back, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's BS and it gets pushed away again. But... Uh, you know, they're going to say it's in the name of safety, which is ridiculous. So, you know, that's what these wait stations claim is it's for safety. It's for safety, but they pull you in and they'll write you the stupidest bullshit ticket you've ever seen in your life. For nothing, you know. Some of them are real cool. You know right away if they're cool or not. They act normal. When they act like you're an alien walking in there and they don't talk to you, they just stare at you angrily for no reason and you're screwed. So, I mean, you never know who you're going to get, but honestly, when I've been pulled over or pulled in, it's always been about 60, 40, 40% that they're going to be nice and reasonable and normal like everybody else, and then 60% of the time they're just sticking the butt over nothing. And I mean, I take care of my own truck, so when I mean sticking the butt, I mean like sticking the butt, you know? So... Just something about that. Now they're going to have the power of the e-logs to help them, you know, rake in more money off of us. And uh, people think that we make all this money, like so much money, it's ridiculous, but that's just not true. It's not true. Uh, especially if you own your own truck. I mean, you've got to be rolling with teams or something, or maybe you were in the um, oil or fracking thing when that was a hit, but... If you're in dry or reefer or all this other stuff, or flatbed or whatever, it all pays the same. It really comes out to be the same by the, by the end of the numbers. Fuel and everything. And some people, you know, at these truck stops will brag and don't listen to these guys. And I've been doing this a long time. Those people are stupid. Just go in your truck and do your own thing. Um, they'll say some of the just craziest crap. And you're like... All these men are, like, between the ages of 40 and, and up, you know, like 40 to 70 or whatever, and they're driving out here, and they're just saying the most ridiculous claims, you know, and immediately you'll be like, I'm back in high school, that's what this feels like. So don't listen to those people, man, they're stupid. They're going to say whatever to feel better, they don't want to just call a spade a spade, you know. And that's part of the problem. When people make it sound greater than it is, they hold us back. We don't get paid any better. Because there's like everybody's on this train that we make so much money. And it's just not. We make good money, yes, but is it worth it? Not really. No. In the truck all the time, deteriorating, bad posture, bad back, teeth getting all jacked up, you know, sleep deprived, whatever smelly all the time, but it is what it is.
you know, just depends on your route, what you're next to, what's convenient. I do long haul, so nothing's ever convenient. So I got a couple of things in my truck to make my life a little more convenient. Like, um, uh, I got a portable shower that I rigged up. I'll probably show a video on that later. Um, and it's an emergency thing I rigged up, so if for some reason I'm not going to get a shower in and I know I'm going to need one because I got to be clean before I sleep. I just do. So, unless I am just dead tired, it's going to be hard for me to get a good rest if I'm gross. And then I'm going to lay here and the truck's off and sweat some more on top of that on my bed. You know, it's just terrible. So... Anyways, yeah, you'll hear some people make some ridiculous claims, but just to just blow them off. There's just a lot of phonies. You know, they're like probably still company or whatever, and they're just blowing it, you know. So uh, there are some loads that pay better. You'll hear people like, oh, I got this load like from Florida, blah, blah, pays like 4000 It's like even if you got a load that paid that well from A to B, you're not going to get a load that pays that well from B back to A. You know what I mean? So, if you live in a certain area, so like if you live, you know, closer towards California and Mexico and all that area, and you take a load to like New York or New Jersey or whatever, places nobody wants to go, yeah, those pay more. It pays more to go north, you know, than to go south because nobody wants to go north especially you know northeast nobody wants to go that way and uh, there's a lot of stuff people don't tell you when you do go that way you know when you go to New York and Jersey and all those things they don't tell you about all those tolls when you get there so maybe you're looking at the load and you're like oh we'll pay so much better no it doesn't it doesn't they've already done this a million times they figured out that the tolls cost this much and some of you are like well how much can tolls cost you know if you never drove a truck well let me tell you a toll that would cost a car a dollar to go through is going to cost a truck minimum twenty dollars all right so just think about that minimum twenty dollars so most of the time i go through a toll it's twenty dollars twenty five dollars whatever and um when you get closer to you know crazy areas of Jersey and New York, they go up $40, $60, $80, $100 to cross a damn bridge with a truck. And I was just imagining like an evil gremlin blocking the bridge, you know, and it's like, $100, you fool! You know, and it's just like, I really gotta pay this shit to go deliver food to you? Why? So, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that you find out when you get into it, and uh, it's just crazy out here. Um, I can hear them, I can feel the trailer shaking, so I know they're putting some stuff back there, some product. After I get out of here, I gotta go back to the yard. I'm gonna weigh my truck out because we got a scale. That's another thing. I don't know if you guys are familiar with scales. Um, that's why we have scale houses that write tickets. And uh, they check your weight because you can only be a legal amount of weight. So you can only be, uh, your front two tires of your truck can only be 12,000 pounds. Uh, your next four, which are called your drive tires, which are the butt of your actual truck, those between four and eight tires, depending on your setup, those can only be 34,000 pounds. And then the last four or eight tires on the trailer, the very, very last set can only be 34. So the max could be 12, 34, 34. That's it. Of course, you don't want to be max because you're going to get pulled into every damn weight station that there is. You want to be like um, 10 and a half, 32, 32, you know. Then they'll probably leave you alone. But if you're any higher than that, they're going to start pulling you in and making you physically stop on a scale. And they're going to take photos of your truck and run your plates and run your all your numbers on your truck and your profile is going to pop up and then they're going to take your weight and then if you're past all those things then they're going to let you slide hopefully or they're going to decide to be a dick and they're going to be like hey come in I want to check your logbook so um, 
you bring your logbook, and then they might you when you bring your logbook, you have to bring everything: your medical card, uh, your all your papers for your truck, insurance, cap card, all that stuff. So bills for your load, just bring it all in there. License, everything, because they're going to probe you, and you're not going to find out how badly they're going to probe you until you walk in there. So you might just walk in there, be somebody real cool, just you know, boom. I just want to see how you look. You look legit. Okay, get out of here. You know, whatever. Sometimes you go in there and they just start looking to screw somebody and they picked you that day at that place. And it sucks because <clears throat> sometimes you get pulled into a scale or you see a truck right in front of you or behind you get pulled in and you're just like, damn, it sucks for them because you know what it's like. And uh, the part that makes it scary is you might go through, you know, 15 wait stations that day in one day. And you got to be scared every time you go through them. It's bullshit. Why should I be scared while I'm doing my job? You know? I'm just driving from A to B, but I always got to be paranoid because I got to worry about someone trying to just ruin my day with meaningless ticket. And they'll find a ticket over something. They'll find something. I promise you. They can just write whatever. Oh, this bolt was a little loose. This bush in here was a little whatever. You know? Or... Your truck that has a million miles doesn't look brand new. Yeah? Yeah, well, it looks a little greasy. Yeah? It's got a million miles. It's seen a lot of the world. So, I mean, if you are not doing anything, I recommend you power wash your motor every now and then just so it looks a little decent. If you got a new truck, it's going to look good. You know, just, you don't have to work very hard. But when you got a truck like mine, you gotta power wash, especially after PMs and stuff. Just try to try to make it look spiffy, you know. You do what you can with what you got. But um, yeah. So that's just a little insight in this. Just wanted to ramble a little bit. Um, I don't know if you guys ever saw my video here of the Magic Mount. I did one in my Ford Focus that I drive, but. I have one in my Ford Focus, one in my sleeper here. There it is. And then I have one on the dash of my truck. I don't know if you can see it over there. But uh, I uh, highly recommend those magic mounts, especially if you're in the trucking business. That is the most awesome mount I've ever had in my life. I mean, Look at it. You just stick your phone to it. Now look, it's looking at me. Boom! What? Oh, I'm in a hurry? Boom! No matter. Boom! And it stays. It just stays. It's awesome. I hit bumps all the time. My truck is not the best. My phone stays right there. Wide view, up and down view, whatever, you know what I mean. Landscape, whatever. Um, in and out of a truck stop, I don't want to leave my phone for whatever reason. I need it for something, blah, blah, blah. I just take it off the mount. It just comes off. But it holds great. I'm tired. Blah, blah, blah. Go back to the bunk. Boom. What? Now I can play Netflix and set my alarm and all that crap. So... <clears throat> Then I get home, park my truck, whatever, get out of my truck, and boom, mount the phone to the car, magic mount. This is convenient. I've seen a lot of these other types of uh, magnet holders, like the little ball one. It's like a ball size magnet. And I've been seeing those in the truck stops. And those are basically the magic mount, except it's a ball, it's not flat, so... When you hit bumps and stuff, it's going to shake and your phone's going to like be up here and then it's going to slowly kind of like dwindle away. You know what I mean? Because it's a sphere. So it's just not going to work the same. But um, these magic mounts, I freaking love them. I bought four of them. You know? And uh, I even got a couple friends to get them because they saw mine. I mean, they're just great. They're awesome.
So you should check that video out if you're curious about it. Um, just for the record, none of the videos I make, you know, nobody pays me to make these videos. Um, so I don't get like, like Magic Mouth's not paying me to talk about their stuff, you know. It's just, I buy all my own crap, and the crap I buy that I think is cool, I like to tell other people about it. So, you know, maybe they can buy cool crap like me. So, I mean, little convenient stuff like that. Pretty soon here I'll try and post a video of, like, um, stuff that I keep in my truck and things that I recommend and tools and stuff so you can get an idea of what to do. It's helpful. A lot of the stuff I keep in here is very helpful to uh, get me back home, you know. I keep a lot of stuff that I'll go over at some point. Um, man, so, I mean, I've seen and done a lot of things. So I can hopefully uh, share some wisdom with some of you. I like to listen to uh, people when they talk, even people that are annoying. And I try to find at least one good story that I can learn from. So basically you can take their story and use it as a life experience, like you lived it and learned from it. Just by listening and then thinking on, on it a little bit. And that'll help you avoid troubles, you know, because you'll be a little bit wiser. Just try to grab a story from somebody when they're spending the time on you anyways. Um, well, I don't feel a trailer moving, so I guess they put like one pallet on here, two pallets, and they're just whatever. The way I have to go back anyways, the freeway I have to take back is always busy over here, so it sucks anyways, and it's uh, around 6-ish, 6 6.30-ish now, so it really wouldn't do no good to leave now anyways. I mean, this freeway is, is banana sandwich. It's uh, 35 over here. Just, just terrible. 35 is the worst shit highway of all time. So, I know there's a lot of different 35s, north, south, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, you might go through a part of 35 that's fine, but I'm sure most people that go through 35 near the cities know what I'm talking about. It's butt, it's booty sweat in a can. Nobody wants to drink it. So, yeah. Well, I'm sure I've strayed off a couple points that I was going to make. In fact, I don't even know where I started anymore. I just started talking. But, uh, I'm going to post more videos. I'm going to try to post my whole week's video. I wish I had a dash cam to really give you some more insight on my driving and where I do, where I go. Um, because it's more commendable when you can really, really see what I'm doing, you know? Because all you're seeing now is just me making clips talking. You know, it's not as like, you're not seeing me go out and do the, the other crap, you know? Dropping the trailer, backing the truck up, cleaning the trailer, make sure the truck's done, pre-trip, post-trip, blah, 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 blah. But, uh, it's alright, you know? Maybe if I had a GoPro, I could do it. But, uh, that's not the name of the game right now for me, so I already spent some money building my new computer build and some new stuff, some new toys I bought for my office to, you know, help me make videos and stuff like that and make gaming more fun when I'm home, but also <clears throat> I was able to build it and uh, show my, my kiddo how to build a computer and uh, that was fun, you know. Got to gotta pass it on. Computers have changed so much when I started building them that uh, it's just crazy. I mean, 
they're so easy now and simple and uh, I mean just imagine hard drives already just look at those used to be giant fat bricks I mean you can still get the fat bricks but I mean like the real fat fat bricks with the uh, you know ribbon cables and then now they got the you know thin and then the SATA and then you got the SSDs now and then my new build that I just did I did the um, NVMe SSD which basically looks like a tiny little RAM chip no I mean it's hidden now it just screws on the board there's looks like there's no hard drive at all um, so that's cool you know everything's got a theme to it now which I love those Aces boards and black themes anyways I'm just rambling again uh, so that was cool. That was fun. But uh, anyways, yeah, the name of the game for me right now is Make Money. Um, I've been off work for a little bit, helping around the house with some family stuff. And uh, so I need to hit back, get back on the road and hit it hard and try and do this year some justice by just keep rolling, even though it's going to really, really suck. I'll probably even post a video at some point of weight loss, like how I just stopped being fat driving, and yeah, it's uh, it's terrible. It's very terrible to lose weight while you're driving a truck, but uh, if you're motivated enough, you can do it. I might bring a scale with me because um, I let my weight get up a little bit again, and um, I want to push it back down and like 20 pounds, which, um, the weight's not in my face anymore, it's on my gut, I got a little tire, a little bitty tire, it doesn't look that bad right now because of the way I'm sitting, but it's, it's noticeable, you know, I got a little muff, a little muffin top thing on my waist coming back because when I got out of the truck finally, I went back to just eating whatever, and then I would busy a lot, so, you know, balancing all the stuff that was going on, working on a truck, trying to make these videos and stuff, I wasn't working out to my full potential, I was only doing, like, you know, half-ass workout, push-ups, pull-ups every day, a couple crunches, blah, 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 and then not doing any running, and just eating whatever, that's what, that's what kills it, is the eating so, I mean, you could work out for six hours a day, and if you're just kind of teetering around working out, you're, you're doing stuff constantly, but you're not really hitting it hard, you know what I mean? Then um, you shouldn't be eating like that, honestly. I mean, everybody's a little different, you know, but basically, uh, as I've gotten older, diet has become extremely important. It used to be nothing. I used to... I used to be able to eat like 4,000 calories a day and not gain any weight, but uh, I was hitting it hard every day, you know. People would always ask me, what is your diet, what is your diet, I'd be like, diet, what do you mean diet, drink a soda while I work out, I don't care. I do now though, I don't drink real sodas anymore, I drink diet sodas, a lot of coffee, um, water every now and then. It's good for you to drink a lot more water. I prefer diet sodas and coffees, which are terrible for you, but it's a lot better than a real soda, and you can still lose weight with them. So I use them. Um, sometimes if I feel like grinding it a little harder that week, I'll just drink nothing but water and a coffee here and there. Coffee's good for you in, in small doses, so don't let people scare you away from it. yeah they're taking their time now so I'm just gonna take a nap it's the best thing to do when you can um, the only other thing I'd recommend besides going straight to napping is um, since my truck has a bunk here something that I like to do is uh, put my hand up here and do pull-ups you know I'll face the other way and do pull-ups like this, you know, and pull myself up, and I try to look over the bunk. 
So I'll do pull-ups there. There's just enough room if you lay the right way. You can do push-ups. So like your legs that way, your hands over here. You can do push-ups here. You can do sit-ups here. You know, <clears throat> stuff like that. Help keep you in shape. Go for a run if you're going to be parked for the day. Just do one mile. I know a lot of people are like, so forget that, but think about it, man. One mile, if you're around my weight, like 200 plus, then uh, one mile, you're going to burn like 180 calories. And uh, that one mile might take you 15 minutes, but you get faster. And eventually that one mile will be 10 minutes and then eight minutes. And then when you think about it, it's just 10 minutes of your day. Like, just go spend the 10. So, you know, that 10 minutes will just really help you out. If you're going to be parked at like a TA or Petro for the day and you feel energetic, whenever you go in for your shower, just do your exercise in the shower. Uh, before you get in the shower, obviously. You know, do jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups, dips with that little bench they got there. Um, you know, stuff like that. Or And possibly run before you even go into the shower. Do a jog. Then go in there, do some extra, you know, push-ups and stuff. Because you don't want to just lose weight. You want to keep muscle definition. So try to throw those in there. I know it's it's crappy and exhausting and nobody wants to do it, but... It helps slow your deterioration from driving this truck. But, um, that's just what I would do. That's what I actually do. And then I got my emergency uh, shower system I put in here. I'll go over that later. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people will find that helpful because on my quest to uh, figure out exactly how I was going to shower in a semi-truck, it was really hard. There was a lot of stuff. And I mean, sometimes it's so cold where I go that I don't want to shower outside the truck. And that makes it complicated. You know, if it's warm and you can just shower outside, it's a lot easier than when you're trying to shower inside a sleeper cab. But, uh, I've let this go on way too long. It's been like 30 minutes, just BS and so I'm gonna head out of here I'm gonna nap and when they're done I'm gonna go get my bills and everything I'll show that and head home to the yard scale the truck <laughs> just got the green light got out of the hole move my truck out of the way for somebody else Went and put some load locks in the back there, closed it up. Now I'm walking inside to get my bills and my seal. And I'm gonna head out of here. All right, I got my paperwork, my seal and everything. Something I wanted to mention is, when you go to some of these um, distribution centers, sometimes they have stuff for truckers. So don't be afraid to ask. Like, uh, I just got uh, some yogurts. Okay guys, I'm back at the yard now. I just need to weigh my truck. I have uh, full tanks on the reefer and the truck, so be sure to fill up, you know, before you weigh your truck. Unless you're pretty close to full, then it won't matter. But 200 gallons is a lot of weight, so just be leery of that. Can't really see that, but that's 32.8, so basically 33, and that's the trailer. So the front was 31.5, the next set was 31, I mean, uh, sorry, the first set was 11.5, uh, almost 12, and then um, 31, and then 32.8. So I'm good to go, I don't have to adjust it, but I can move some of this rear weight closer to the front, make it like a 32, 32, you know, if I want to. Okay, so I'm done weighing the truck and everything, it's gotten dark already. And uh, 
It's good. It's full of gas. It's ready to go for tomorrow. Reefer's all set up. Keep everything cool. And uh, weight was uh, 11.5, 31, 32.8. Um, I'm kind of thinking about switching the weight a little bit, but it's extra work and switching the weight is going to add more weight on my tires versus the company tires, so I might just leave it as it is, but uh, in some cases you do roll better when you balance out. I mean, you really do better fuel and whatnot, so less strain because you're not lugging the the heaviest part in the, in the butt, you know, it's it's more like on the shoulders, the back of the truck, you know. So, um, eh, I don't think I'm going to adjust it, really. I think I'm just going to leave it as is, but, um, if it was any higher, I would have, I would adjust it. 32.8 though, 31s, you know, means I can move two notches if I want move two holes over and balance it out a little better, but I'll just leave it as it is. I think it'll be fine.